I just found out today that I'm missing some face paint because apparently I'm a clown. Trump supporters are clowns, though. Hmm. I think that the Democrats forget that clowns also vote. It's the Democrats' worst nightmare. Donald Trump rocking the deep blue Bronx with a raucous rally. The lines were spanning blocks to get in. The former president firing up over 10,000 supporters who chanted four more years. Trump on message, laser focused on the Joe Biden disaster, demolishing Sleepy's failures piece by piece in his pitch to minority voters. What a crowd. This is something. Hey. Who said we're not going to win New York? We're going to win New York. On day one, we're going to throw out Bidenomics. They're going to replace it with Meganomics like you hey. have. I will give you low taxes, low inflation, low interest rates, rising wages, growing incomes, and fair trade for the American worker. And we will make energy affordable again by saying, drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. I have come tonight to talk about solving problems. Mm -hmm. The simple fact is Joe Biden is not getting the job done for the Bronx. He's not getting the job done for New York. And he's not right. getting the job done for America. We have mobs of migrants fighting our police officers and giving America the middle finger. Mm -mm. Very simply, Joe Biden puts illegal aliens first. I put America first. I know that's Democrats right. Democrats fuming at the sight of their base flocking to the rally. It must be soul crushing for them to see Trump assembling a diverse working class coalition. And hacks like New York Democrat Governor Kathy Hochul had nothing nice to say except nasty smears like <laughs> this. I want to hear it. Let's hear. Well, I'll tell you, it won't make a difference at all, Jake, and that is for Donald Trump to be the ringleader of a, and invite all his clowns to a place like the Bronx. New York will never, ever support Donald Trump for president. I told y'all, they don't look at Trump supporters like humans at all. <laughs> we're, we're just some, how do I say this? We're some wonder of the world. I don't understand ever it. Support Donald Trump for president. <laughs> But if you want to talk about clowns, Kathy, the left wing media is full of them. Oh, my God. Listen gosh. to how they reacted to the rally. He's not going to win New York. He's not going to win uh, the Bronx. But that that audience is not the Bronx. Yeah. The audience is everyone else in states that he could possibly win. And what he tries to do, and there's no downside for him to do this, by the way, uh, what he's trying to do is to signal to other people, signal to people in swing states who are yeah. white, who don't want to be thought of as voting for racist to soften the ground That's there right. and say, well, maybe he's not such a racist. But people of the Bronx are making up their own minds about Trump. Oh my God. We've been voting down the same party for years now and nothing has changed. Things have gotten out of control. We're dealing with housing situations. We're dealing with homelessness, the mentally ill, crimes. The cost of living has uh, spiraled out of control. Uh, I don't see Biden doing anything about it. And also, um, there's an influx at the border that needs to be dealt with. And I think that Trump is the man to do it. I've seen the change go for the worse with the Bidenomics, with the Democratic Party. I've been Democrat all my life. And Donald Trump, he just has the right answers. Mm. So Donald Trump dares to go into the big blue Bronx. <laughs> Biden wouldn't do that in a deep at Republican all. area, would he? I, I don't expect him to. Yeah, basically threw a bash in their backyard. And Hochul calling them clowns is rich. She looks like she played seven minutes in heaven with Bozo the Clown. <laughs> a lot of makeup there, lady. <laughs> this, is a this is a battle between reality and ideas. So the reason why I think Trump resonates and why there's excitement is that he talks about real things, not ideas. So right. it's like jobs, it's crime, the border, and prices. And then he talks about bacon. He goes off on bacon. I can't buy bacon. That's a thing. Joe right now and the Democratic Party are floundering in ideas. You know, white supremacy, threats to democracy, the soul of America. These are things that you cannot touch. These are concepts. But when you talk about your family, that is real. When you talk about your kids, that is real. Yeah. What, what Joe is pushing 
is a denial of what's real by calling everything an idea. So gender isn't real, it's an idea. Crime isn't real, it's a perception. Inflation isn't real, it's a concept. I think the mistake that the Democrats have made probably in the last 10 years or so is that they left the world of the real for the world of the abstract. They took they took Definitely. the lead from the campuses and they abandoned the cul-de-sac. So like when you think about your you think about how you think about your friends, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, their friends, their family, their relatives, their co-workers. But to the Dems, it became vessel. Everyone became a vessel of power. You know, oppressor versus oppressed. Gender becomes a fluid concept. The border is a, the border is not a tangible thing. Right now, you're seeing people kind of react and go like, what is Biden talking about? None of these things resonate in my life. Meanwhile, this guy is actually talking about the stuff we see every day. Immigrants outside of hotels, you know, driving up Sixth Avenue, guys passed out. It's like those are things that you can touch, although I don't advise it. <laughs> and to me, that's one of the biggest differences between a Joe Biden and a Donald Trump. You see, when you watch Joe Biden give his public speeches, um, of speeches that aren't like behind the camera which are edited but anyhow uh, public speeches you know that he's reading from a teleprompter quite literally he's reading all the cues too and last time he literally read the moment uh i mean he read out loud pause <laughs> which was a cue for him to follow but anyhow however so when when i'm watching biden it's, it's all like manufactured sort of robotic answers and a lot of gibberish but when I'm hearing Trump speak, it's definitely to the heart of the people, to the things that I see every single day. He's talking about everyday struggle and real life issues that we're having. And he's not speaking from a delusional place like the DOJ and the Democrats try to do so much. They try to sit here and act like we're not experiencing what we're experiencing with inflation. They try to sit here and act like we're not having a crisis at the border and being invaded. They try to sit here and act like everything is okay with the educational system, foreign policy, taxes, uh, trade, I'm sorry. And all like they try to make sure they try to act like everything is fine and it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, Shannon, uh, when you listen to Donald Trump here, he, he was very authentic. He was himself. There were no sweeping generalizations. There were no, uh, you know, there was no hyperbole. He was just real. I mean, Greg is right about that. I mean, do you think that he hit the message the way he wanted to? I think he feels like there's an opportunity. Republicans see an opportunity to say there's been a shift. They want to point to Democrats. For example, the progressive stuff and what's happening on campus saying they're now the ultra elite Ivy League educated folks. We're now the working class party. That's the argument they want to try to be able to make. So I think he was willing to go here and let the optics do some of the talking where President mm -hmm. Biden goes to very controlled environments. They're much smaller things. And as you said, I'm not sure that he's going to go to Alabama and try to do uh, an event down there. But President Trump seems willing to go into here. He knows not everybody in the Bronx loves him. He's a New Yorker. He knows how this works. But remember, even if these aren't all Bronx people that are there, listen to the ones who do say they're from there. There was a teacher that one of our folks talked to yesterday who said, I'm from the Bronx. I teach here. And when I look around and see that resources are being spent on people who are here illegally, that we have compassion for, but it means resources are away from our communities and I'm struggling economically, that's a real problem for me. So it's worth listening to those voices, whatever party you're coming from. Facts. Kevin, why are the Democrats so afraid? I mean, why does Kathy Hochul have to have her moment of uh, her, her deplorables moment and call the Republicans clowns? I mean, you know, it's a race. Well, I mean, this Democrat is just a little afraid sitting next to you. Uh, <laughs> one. Uh, but I'd say, listen, I, I'd love to see uh, Donald Trump campaigning in New York, in New Jersey. Ronald Reagan last flipped uh, New York back in the 80s. Um, so please spend all of your time and resources there. I think Shannon makes an excellent point, though, too, because we've seen throughout history changing demographics, right? The South was a Democratic stronghold for decades. Yep. Uh, LBJ flipped that. Richard Nixon flipped that back to the Republican column. You know, Democrats flipped Georgia and Arizona for the first time in generations with uh, with uh, President Biden. So you see these kind of changing demographics, changing coalitions. Um, and we'll see how that plays out in the next six months.
Do you think, Joey, that the president is going to continue to go into Democrat areas? Well, I mean, as long as he has to be here, probably. And, you know, <laughs> That's they, true. They, they, flipped, yeah. uh, they flipped Georgia with uh, a lot of drop boxes and, and funny things. Uh, but they I don't sure know if did. They flipped the hearts and minds of Georgians. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you now, I live in I like how he clapped back right to his face, y'all. <laughs> right to his face. He's like, all right, look, you talk about you, you want to you wanna manufacture history. Let me go ahead and insert some context. The Greens District and Biden which would be comparable to New York City, and Biden wouldn't show up there, and if he did, he wouldn't have a crowd. Uh, this is not about winning New York. This is about signaling to the rest of the country, and especially those that have big checks to write, hey, you're safe to bet on me, because I can go to the place that I should have nobody show up and mm -hmm. get a roaring crowd. This is about Cobb County and Gwinnett County, Georgia. You might not win Fulton, but can you bring in 5,000 more votes in the, the other two counties that touch rule Georgia? This is about the Yes, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't mean to pause, but he just... He just touched down on counties that I'm familiar with. I, when I first moved to Georgia, I was I lived in Cobb County. Uh, now that I'm older, I live in Fulton County. And these are areas that, honestly, when I first was here, I was like, yeah, it's definitely blue. You know, but when Trump came out here to Fulton County, I had a, a surprise. So shout out to my people out here in the South, out here waking up. Two counties that touch rule Georgia. This is about the people in Milwaukee and Detroit, Minneapolis, states that Trump was competitive in in, 20, uh, in 2016 that Mike can come back in 2024. And, you know, you watch that and you see where, it's, where that lady goes, we've been Democrats forever and nothing's changed. That's only half true. Things have changed. The policies that Democrats have enacted in big cities and urban areas to control rent and to control education and to do things to try to even the playing field and bring in equity have only hurt them. They've, it's only held people down. And so what has changed is the opportunity for those people to keep up with the rest of the country who's seen prosperity since 2008. And so uh, it, does it matter if he wins New York? No. What matters is everyone sat at home and watched that and said, wow, you know, in Texas, the bigger belt buckle you wear, the more there better be behind it. You should have won a rodeo. That's like walking in with a big belt buckle. That's what that is. That's signaling to the country, I can do this in New York. Yep. What's with the yep. dark shirt? I don't know, it's blue. I like what, it. What's wrong with I, it? It matches the tie. I know. I, I, I don't know. You, you, you like look it? like it's got a bike square, too. Uh, what's with the school uniform? It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. It's free dress day, Joey. You look like you sell Winnebago's. Oh, <laughs> I buy a car. I buy a car. Even what? after that, what? Even what? After what? that tangent, I buy a car. Oh, I love the five. I love watching Judge Janine uh, give us real insight to everything that's happening, given her experience. That woman can definitely create a podcast on her own, all by herself, but definitely ripped into why this is the worst nightmare for Democrats. Gutfield is definitely doing what Gutfield does. I can't remember everybody else's name on the panel, but uh, you know, they got a cool little replacement for Jessica. Huh? Are they interchanging a Democrat uh, person on the panel? Anyhow, watching Joy Reid meltdown was the highlight of my life. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, yo, y'all need to go ahead and throw in the towel. Like, I don't know how long y'all can be able to keep this up. I don't get it. You know what I mean? Uh, and especially with her racism and bigotry um, that she puts spews out there on MSNBS. But um, not only that, everything that they touched on, man, just from how relatable Donald Trump is and how he's somebody who's not afraid to walk through the fire. And I think that that is something that America needs to see. They need to they need to see somebody walk into a room where everybody disagrees with that man, but he's able to still be himself. That's the one thing that you can't say about Donald Trump despite walking in a, in a crowd full of people who love him or in a crowd full of people who strongly hate him he's still able to maintain who he is and he he didn't go there begging anybody for uh help or handouts he went there negotiating like look man this is what it is y'all can keep it this way if y'all want to or you know what i'm saying i can introduce y'all to how to win you feel me so salute to them for that and um i think that trump has the ability man to to honestly make even more history to continue to flip these blues red in my opinion um I, i'm seeing a strong shift out here in georgia myself and yeah i can see that the liberals right now the the left they are having a meltdown <laughs> Ah, I'm almost worried to see what you know what they're gonna turn out to be when they come to them polls. I'm just keeping it real. We know that you know, all this is cool, but all that matters is what happens in November. 
And as far as Kathy go, <laughs> yeah, we, we showed up to the circus if we clowns. We showed up. Definitely did. You know, um, I don't know if you ever showed up to your, your uh, circus act clown. You know what I mean? Or at least, you, at least we we're. How do I tell you what I'm trying to say, y'all? Because I'm over here fumbling the play. Wise people are brave enough to make a change. <laughs> or at least try to support the man who's trying to. That's definitely a start instead of supporting a uh, hokel. Maganomics.